What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and this is part two of the auto load, creating an amazing expandable logic template. Now in part one, we went over why you want to create an auto load. It is a custom template that you can use and it's expandable. It goes to the back end of something called the environment in Logic and you can set up all your future tracks back there and pull them into your session with the settings that you want. Now in part two, we're going to go over that environment, something that's in the background, something that was originally in Logic from its inception on how you create things, but has since been kind of relegated to the background and hard to find. And we're gonna focus on setting up our audio first. Let's take a look. Okay, we're gonna first start in creating our auto load using something called the environment. But as explained in the first video, there is two ways you can set this up for a laptop or for a desktop. And it really, it just matters of how much screen space you have. For the purposes of saving time, we're gonna do this on a laptop, but Note that this can be expandable to a desktop where you can have more audio, more software instruments, more buses, more auxiliaries. But since we are setting this up on a laptop, you know that real estate is the name of the game. That's having plenty of space to do all of your work on your laptop. And we're going to first start with the system settings on the laptop to make sure that we have the maximum amount of screen width. Let's take a look. Okay, while we're in our laptop, we're going to go into first our system preferences. And as we go into our system preferences, we are going to focus on the displays area. And you'll notice that there is, they have default display or you can do the scaled display. Now we want to do the scaled and we want to set this up for the most amount of space possible. This setting will give us the maximum amount of real estate for our auto load. So once you've done that, you can close out of that. We can get into logic. And the first step is just going file new. And when you do file new, it gives us this, uh, what do you want to do screen? And the audio tab, which is what we're gonna set up first, is already selected, so we can start from here. Now let's look at the audio input area. Assuming that you have a Scarlet or something like that, we're just gonna keep this audio input to one. These other things we're not gonna have checked because right now we're just gonna assume that all of our audio tracks that we want are gonna be using that input one. If we look at our audio output section, you'll know from my other videos that I don't want to go to the stereo output. What I want to go to is a bus. And so we're gonna go ahead and set that up to bus one. Again, I'm not gonna have anything over here checked, especially note that you do not wanna have input monitoring checked because once you add your audio tracks, it's going to probably feed back if your speaker's on your laptop. So since we're on a laptop, we're gonna say, how many tracks could we possibly want? I'm just gonna say, 32. If you're on a desktop, you might want 64. Who knows? You might want 128. It just depends on the nature of the sessions that you're doing. So we're going to set this up with 32 tracks. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and create the 32 tracks. Just hit 32, hit create, and boom, there they are. There is our 32 tracks we just added, all with an input of input one and output of bus one. Now I'm gonna show you this thing that I've been speaking of, this environment. And to access the environment, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is Command-0, and that will bring up the environment. And here you go, I'm gonna go ahead and expand the screen so you can see it all. And now you can see here are the 32 tracks of audio we just added into the environment. Now you'll note that the graphics are different than the normal graphics of Logic because this is something that Logic has not updated and has kind of been relegated to the background. Now just a quick overview of the environment. The environment, if you go in the upper left hand corner, you'll see where it says layer. There are several layers. And when you go to look at all objects, this is all the objects that are in your session. This is kind of the way it was done way back in the day where everything had to be kind of patched together to create this environment. It was a little bit more difficult back then. You can see there's these global objects where there's nothing there. But back in the day, you had to actually physically put your MIDI click in using this little tool here. That is no longer the case with Klopfgeist. And you'll see MIDI Instruments has nothing. And Mixer is where all of our audio that we just added reside. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to select all the audio that we just added into this. Make sure you don't click preview, click aux, stereo, and master. We'll hit those in a second. But what I do wanna do is turn the automation read off. Now on to these five items. I'm going to select them and drag them down below our audio here. And you can see this is where the clunkiness of this comes in. Come on, you can do it. There, oh, almost. There we go, Whew. So 
In fact, we'll expand this so we don't have to deal with that again. Let me explain what these are. Preview is something you definitely don't want to delete. Preview is when you're auditioning an audio file or something that's in your audio bin. Uh, it's using this channel here to audition. So if you delete preview, suddenly you won't be able to hear anything that you are previewing like loops or anything else. So please do not delete this. The next thing is click. Now I showed you what it looked like in the old way with that old MIDI click, but Logic has since used something called Klopfgeist. Funny name, I always say it like that, I don't know why. And that is our click generator, which is essentially a little plugin. So you definitely don't wanna delete that. The next thing up is an auxiliary, which we will get to later, but in the meantime, I'm going to stick this over here because right now we're not gonna be dealing with that. And of course, the last two things are your stereo out and master. These are very important. You do not wanna delete them. You'll have a problem if you do. With the stereo out, we're gonna take read off of that. But before we add our buses, I want to stop and make a quick point. This is being set up in my tabs mixing workflow, which is tracks, auxiliaries, buses, and stereo out. You can check out my two part video on that if you haven't already. So in the tabs format, our buses are where we collect like kind of instruments from tracks. So if you have multiple tracks of drums, they'll be on a drum bus. If you have multiple guitars, they'll be on a guitar bus. And that's how we're gonna set this up. For the sake of a laptop, we're probably not gonna have enough real estate to add as many buses as you might like to. So we're gonna add eight instrument buses and then one extra bus called the effects return bus. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So to add your buses in the environment window, you're gonna go to the new menu and go to channel strip and select bus. And you'll note that it brings this bus over here. So we're gonna drag that over here next to these other guys. And over here in the left hand corner where it says channel bus two, we're gonna go ahead and change that to bus one. Even though it says bus two below, that's just the naming of it. We'll change that later. Now the easiest way to create our nine buses is just go new channel strip bus. And what it does is it goes to the next number of buses. And since we wanna have nine buses, we want them to all be routed correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here are our nine buses. Now I'm gonna separate that ninth bus out as that's gonna be our effects return bus. And I'm gonna select all of the buses and I'm gonna have them go to stereo out. And I'm going to remove any automation read off of this. And you'll notice it says two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All we really need to do at this point is change the name of bus two to bus one, which I'll do right here up top left hand corner. And now the names below the buses correspond with the names that are shown under this little stereo out area. However, this bus nine, I'm going to change to effects return. So just do F X R T. And, and that concludes setting up our buses for this auto load. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is set up our auxiliaries. And there's three types of auxiliaries we're gonna use. The first are just monitors for our audio interface. Let's just for the sake of argument saying we're using a two channel Scarlet. So our first two auxes are going to just be to monitor that. The next set of auxiliaries we're gonna set up are the effects auxiliaries. And since we're on a laptop, we're a little bit limited in the screen real estate. So we're just gonna set up four effects auxiliaries. Now the final type of auxiliary we're gonna set up is a side chain. And those side chains can be used to do some side chain compression. It can be used as additional audio areas, but I like to have a couple of areas where I can put audio where it's not related to necessarily the track. And that's what we're gonna set up there with those auxiliaries. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now back in the environment, we already have auxiliary one here. And so we're gonna drag this next to our buses. So to set up our auxiliaries, we're gonna use the same new channel strip and this time use auxiliary and that will add those auxiliaries there. So we're gonna do the two for our audio interface monitoring and then we're gonna do our four effects auxiliaries and then finally our two side chain auxiliaries. Now it's fair to point out you'd be like, I don't really need side chains, I'd rather have more effects. This is just my guide on how to do this. You can set up however you want. This is just how I would set up my auto load uh, because that's how I mix. But again, this is really your baby, the way you're gonna to wanna to have it set up. So all this stuff is modifiable based on your needs. So let's continue finishing up these auxes. All right, so I'm gonna separate the first two auxes from the next four. And again, I'm gonna do this kind of like I did with the buses, just to kind of visually see where I am at with all these. And we're gonna set these up a little bit different. So it's kind of necessary to do this anyway. So aux one and aux two are monitoring our 
interface. So we're going to select these two. First thing we want to do is make sure, since we're using this for audio interfaces, make sure that they're both mono. So if you click the double circles, you can see that you can make them mono that way. And what we'll do is change our inputs to input one and input two. Now, if you click the option key while you do that little maneuver, you can see it automatically looks at the next one and decides to use input two. And you'll also see that these are at minus 24. So we're gonna select both of these and make them zero. And you will also see that you can see my voice in this. So what we wanna do is mute this. Otherwise, you'll be feeding back all the time. Once again, I'm gonna turn off this read automation. And I'm going to go ahead to where it says multiple selection up in the upper left hand corner. This is where we name these and I'm going to do in one and I have them both selected and you'll notice that on the bottom here, it'll change it from in one to in two. Nice little feature that still works in the environment. So these two auxiliaries are going to be to monitor our audio interface. And now we're going to go to the next four, which are going to be our effects. Once again, I'll take off the read automation. And now we need to have a little side conversation on how things are routed in logic. So in order to set this up, like we do on a mixing board where you have a channel and if you want to affect that channel, you use an aux send where you dial a portion of that channel to some sort of outboard gear effect. That is how we're going to set this up in logic. However, we'll be using a bus to send that signal. Think of it as your signal is going on a little bus and going down the road and ending up at the effects auxiliary. But because we already have the first nine buses used in our auto load, we're going to have to look at the buses after those nine buses. However, I will give yourself some leeway. Let's say you want to expand your session later to have 16 buses. Well, if you use bus 10 as your effect send, then it's going to be a little weird. So I recommend starting at bus 20 for your effect send. Now this might not make sense because you're like, I don't get the bus, the oxes, and the other buses, and there's so many buses and oxes. Stop. Just follow along and then you'll go, Oh, okay, let's check it out. So my inputs for my buses are going to be starting at bus 20. To do that, we're gonna click the option key and go to bus and we're gonna to go to bus 20 and you'll see the auto load nicely fills this out to bus 20, 21, 22, and 23. Now we created this effects return to receive these auxiliaries. So we don't want them to be sent to the stereo out. We actually want them to be sent to the effects return. So what we'll do is we'll select these four and we will go ahead and say, hey, we want you to go to bus nine, which is our effects return. Now these are properly set up. Now the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to relabel these effects one through four. So I select all of them. I go to multiple selection and I'm gonna click effects one and it'll name them effects one, two, three, and four. So this sets up our auxiliary effects. Finally, we have our side chains. The side chains are not gonna have an input assigned to them and they are gonna to go to the stereo out. And we will go ahead and take off the read automation. And all we really need to do here is rename them. So I'm gonna to go to the multiple section and say SC1 for side chain one and you'll see that it has side chain one and side chain two. So now we have added all the audio we want for our auto load. So to recap, we have our 32 channels of audio that we can use on our tracks. And we have our essentials that we don't want to get rid of, a preview for uh, auditioning audio files, our click, which is our Kraftgeist, our stereo out, and our master out, followed by our eight instrument buses and our one effects return bus. Then our two auxiliaries that are going to be monitoring our audio interface our four effects auxiliaries and our two side chains. So there's one last thing we're gonna do in this environment, which is where the layer says mixer, we're gonna rename that to our audio. Just go to rename layer and we're just gonna call that audio, boom. And now we're gonna close this out. But there is one thing that we have to deal with on our main screen here, which is we have all 32 audio tracks here and we don't want them all here. I would say we only want eight of them. So how do we get rid of these? What we do is we just go back into our environment by command zero. So let's just say we want uh, eight tracks of audio on our main screen here. So we're gonna select nine through 32 and we're going to cut them out of here. And it says, hey, you wanna do this? And I say, delete anyway. Now, when we go back into our main screen, you'll see it says no output. Oh no, no output. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and delete all of these extra no output tracks. So we get down to our eight. We're gonna go back to our environment and we'll just paste them back in and move them back where they should be. 
And now we'll close out of this and you'll see you have eight tracks, but guess what? Those are still in the background. We can pull them in later if we desire, and they're already assigned to a bus. One more piece of housekeeping in this, we are gonna go to our project settings, and we're gonna go to audio. And remember, we want to make sure that this is at 48, not 44.1. So go ahead and verify that your session is at 48, and it is indeed at 48. And once we've done that, we've done our good housekeeping. So now we're gonna save as the auto load. And as we're saving this, we'll go ahead and do this on our desktop. You'll notice we're using folder, not package, and none of these at this point need to be selected. So go ahead and save it as the auto load and bada boom, bada bing, we are done with the first part of this. So what have we done? We have set up our audio in the environment, this part that goes in the back of Logic. And we've also set it up with more tracks than we need that are gonna be in our session that we can pull from at a later time. In part three of this, we are going to set up these software instruments also in the environment. And we will set them up with more than we have tracks. And we're gonna set them on another layer of that environment. Hopefully this video was helpful. And if you like it, give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe to subscribe to this channel. Click the bell icon if you wanna be notified of new episodes. And make sure to leave your comments below as well so we can dialogue back and forth. And I'll see you on part three of this series creating an amazing expandable logic template. Until then, this is George Gabriel Music.